पृच्छक ज्योति परात्पर ज्योति देव ज्योति स्वयं ज्योति हरि ओम एवर बड़ी हरि ओम श्रवण कैन वील स्टार्ट यस वी कैन स्टार्ट यू कैन you so this talk is on uh, matter in the ascent forum uh, we want to explore topics which are common to both science and spirituality and in this talk we want to look at the very basic uh, thing that we experience which is the matter right so we want to see matter in both science and spirituality and the purpose that we want to do it is to know how matter is described or defined in uh, both science and spirituality right if you look at matter we have some fundamental uh, questions about its definition and uh, while most of the science is for understanding what this matter is and uh, it has come from a long long way the very fundamental questions are still there and we will see at the end of this presentation how much of this these questions how much answer do we have for these questions the first as you can see here is is matter only that which we perceive that means is is the uh, can we see matter and what can we say if we see matter it is matter right is there any matter which that we cannot perceive uh, we probably say yes matter is something that is perceived but let's see other things then the second question is what is matter this matter made up of and this is a question that's been there from quite some time what is the fundamental nature of matter uh, everything we see is it made up the same thing or it is made up of different things that's the one question then if what is the definition of matter normally we see matter is something that's either solid a liquid or gas right so can we say and define this is matter and this is not and another important question is can matter be created or destroyed now at the first instance we say yes we can create matter and we can destroy it but in the fundamental state we, we can only change that's what the first thing that okay we cannot destroy matter matter stays as matter okay maybe you might have ordered it or you might have uh, made it into uh, a gas but it is still there and it can be uh, reversed but is that the right understanding can the matter be created or destroyed and then the last question is a little tricky question uh, is there a relationship between matter energy and mind now this is something that is also been discussed by lot of uh, philosophers from beginning and but there's a difference today we look at the spirituality quite differently and the scientific approach differently and we know the reason why we are looking at these two is because of the differences in this approaches we know that scientific approach is primarily materialistic that means you see from matter you observe you understand 
and you differentiate between various things you analyze and then you come to a certain conclusion after uh, reducing all other aspects and finally say this is what it is so there's some reductive technique used but most importantly more and more now most scientific uh, experiments cannot be carried out because of large energies are uh, we are going into different dimensions so mathematical basis a mathematical proof is considered a very fundamental thing for anything to be proven in science and coming to matter specifically science believes energy is something that acts on matter but it's quite distinct whereas spirituality you know is primarily based on consciousness and it is not so much differentiative it is holistic and it is based on an overall picture which is an integrating principle this is also based on logic and perception but different kinds of perceptions and uh, which is both uh, deducive and uh, also uh, something that is logically possible that uh, anumana and uh, pramana are different here and of course here uh, sp spiritually matter and energy and mind are essentially uh, same so from this angle let us first look at scientifically what is matter now if you ask anybody what is matter a scientist would say or anyone would say it's anything that takes a you know what it is space and has mass now there's some particular reason that these two are uh, covered because we have this definition is a uh, uh, slightly question does matter takes up space does it displace space then does it have mass so these are the questions that we'll see but we whether we can get answers to it or not we don't know but generally it is considered that matter is something that takes space and mass now we all learn that matter has three fundamental states right solid liquid and gas and what makes that matter change from one state to another state is the energy in terms of some heat so you typically take an ice and you melt it you get water and you further uh, boil it and you will get gas or vapor so liquid gas solid liquid and gas are very uh, well known but we also know there's another state called plasma which is something that we know for example sun is full of the matter in sun is cannot be told uh, cannot be uh, described as either solid or liquid or gas it is something uh in a ionized situation ionized gas and that's called plasma but you may not have heard about bose einstein condensate by the way bose is an indian scientist sachindranath bose long time back he had studied and when there were only protons at that time he studied and said that matter should be uh in in certain neutron stars it should be in a very condensate matter and later it was proved by at 0 degrees kelvin that means at absolute zero uh, so it was later proved that you can uh, break down all the uh, current particles and bring matter to this state so these are five states that we stated but there are so many in between states also as per science because they cannot uh, clearly distinguish between the existing states there are several other states but these are some five major states of matter so now let's look at some very fundamental physics about matter that we all study uh, i don't know whether uh, some 
youngsters here studied more than this, but at least we studied only up to this, uh, that the first person who talked about matter in science was uh, regarded in the Western science as Democritus, although we know in India, it's the atomic model is much uh, earlier to him. So Democritus talked about uh, matter in a way that if you keep on reducing it, there will come a time when a matter cannot be reduced anymore. So it, it cannot be cut anymore. The uncutable thing is called atomos or atom, right? But nothing more scientifically was talked about. But the first person who, in fact, after that matter was the fundamental uh, thing uh, in most of the science, right from Newton, who looked at how forces act on matter and assumed that there is some mass to the matter and matter can be measured in mass. So mass and matter was somewhat equivalent. So the only way you can um, measure a matter is by its mass and weight, of course. Uh, it's only a measure of uh, mass again. But uh, the first person who talked about uh, atoms as we know today is a chemist called Dalton, right? He studied several atoms and particularly about uh, water and he was the first one to explain that water is made of, let's say two, uh, specific elements, the lightest element is hydrogen and oxygen. And as you can see here, he looked at every type of element based on the mass units. And he has said that different substances are made of different kinds of atoms who have different kinds of uh, weights at the time, the mass. And it's later that they found that there is a charge to it. But by based on the mass units, he said, for example, water is something which has uh, 16 units of mass of which, I mean, 18 units of mass of which 16 are from oxygen and two are from uh, hydrogen. But of course, uh, these things were later modified. Uh, to more the H2O remain, but the further uh, study of matter was uh, going on in terms of atoms, but then uh, had studied the radioactive effect, and then he found there is some negatively charged particles that are coming out, and based on that. Okay. Atom is something that will have a negative charged particle and a positive charged particle. So that's how the next step of atoms uh, or, uh, or the matter's basic structure was determined as something which will have a negative and positive charges together. Further, this is in the, in the 20th century. and But very soon, a lot of uh, studies have happened on matter and they found that by these radiations, they found that matter is something uh, that is not so solid. Uh, the Rutherford's famous gold uh, foil experiment showed that most of the uh, radiations will go through the matter and only some will come back, which means that matter is uh, mostly space with a very small uh, solid uh, thing called nucleus at the time, right? And very soon they found this uh, electrons or something which have some specific orbit. Bohr came up with this uh, very famously known as planetary uh, uh, model of atom where there is a central nucleus and several atoms are, uh, several electrons are in orbit around that. 
So that for a long time, we thought we have understood what matter is. It is made of atoms, which is made of uh, mostly a, nu a nucleus at the uh, center. They also found that there is protons and neutrons. So some of them are, uh, protons are positively charged, neutrons are uh, neutrally, and electrons are negatively charged. So this is the understanding. And with this understanding, of course, they looked at several elements and this famous uh, elemental table, periodic uh, element table, which is uh, by Mandelavati, is discovered. And this is something that we all know in science. We all studied in our uh, uh, school science. And that is supposed to be the view of matter. But until then, we still felt that matter is something or made of something, but you cannot break it. The nucleus, for example, cannot be broken. So that's the idea. But just before the war, it was very clear that you can break an atom. And the credit for that was actually uh, Lady Mary, I forgot her name. Um, she said that neutrons, those days, they, when they found neutrons, when these collide with some heavy atoms, some strange radiation is there. It's called gamma radiation. And then very soon they found out that the heavy elements in the uh, periodic table are unstable and you can easily break them and one atom can be broken, one element atom can be broken into different elements. So uh, particularly uranium 235, I think, was bombarded with a neutron to temporarily become uranium 236. And that got broken into two atoms, krypton, I think with 99 mass number, and uh, barium, I think with uh, 149 or something. So 144. So with these two, what happened is that the neutron was absorbed, but it uh, in turn gave converted into protons, some more protons inside, and a lot of gamma rays were thrown away. Now, those gamma rays were chargeless and uh, massless. So these were simply some radiation. And then they found, oh, there are something in these atoms which are not neutrons, not electrons, not protons. Something else is also there. And when it radiated, this tremendous of amount of energy also was released, which meant that you have a lot of energy in every atom. Of course, this was predicted by the very famous Einstein's equation e equals mc square, although he didn't predict it this way. His Prediction was only with respect to the energy differences in, a, in the radiation and energy differences. For, and later it was based on the, in the Planck's uh, model where they found that energy moves in uh, amount of quanta. So, but in general, mass can be converted into energy was first discovered at this and before anybody could do more uh, uh, research on this the scientists do something you know who take the benefit of that first so the the destructive forces right so they immediately used it as a bomb and you all know what happened but after the war, when scientists wanted to study the inside of an atom, what is the way to study an inside of an atom? 
they know that now you bombard the atom with a lot of neutrons and you will find new things. So for that, they build large reactors, which are, as they call axel, accelerators, particle accelerators. And in that, they studied what is the other things other than the known uh, particles, what are the things that are made of? So this needed a lot of energies, uh, but they kept on studying that. And then very soon, they found that if you break the nucleus, the normal nucleons, which are protons or uh, neutrons or whatever, will break up into another particles or they're at least made up of different particles and that particles were given a very, um, very quirky name. It's called quark. Now these quarks are very funny materials. They are never found separately, but combination of these quarks make either a neutron or a proton depending upon their specific combination. So there are what's called up quark, down quark. And one more interesting thing is that up to now, electron was one negatively charged uh, with charge one and proton was positively charged with charge one, but this uh, up quarks and down quarks had quarter, one third uh, charge or two third charge. And up quark is positively charged, down quark is negatively charged, so that depending upon the way they form, they together came to uh, form an integral charge of one or two. And this is very, very, you know, uh, surprising. So quarks were something which were uh, the basic fundamental things of uh, a nucleus. Remember, up to now, we thought matter means something very solid. Now we know matter is not so solid, but there is a very solid thing called nucleus inside. Then we came to know this nucleus itself is made of protons and uh, neutrons, but neutrons and protons at least had mass. Now, when you look into these quarks, these quarks don't have mass, but they're highly charged and they're together. So, and some of the, the positively charged neutrons and protons are held together, they don't repel. That's what uh, uh, seemed to be, how do we explain this? As a theory, it was good. That is there we, we found, but we did not know how this massless particles really had mass. So what is mass in a matter was not clear. So also it is, is it only these quarks and uh, electrons and some of the things like electrons are, are there anything else? There, are there more fundamental particles that make up these uh, proton, neutron, and electron. Then a lot of study happened. And you now know there are a lot of subatomic particles. You see that there are six types of quarks. Uh, although up and down quarks are most normal, there are uh, some other quarks here, but C is charm and strange. And uh, top and bottom. Now, other than up and down, the other two are very, very uh, unstable. They form and they go away. Also, like electrons, uh, now we have a whole class of uh, elements like electrons and uh, some of them are muons and tos. And not only that, there are neutrinos, some particles like electron, but doesn't have that charge, negative charge, called the neutrino version of that. So, new, uh, so electron neutrino, muon neutrino, tau neutrino. So there are different kinds of uh, particles that we found in these studies. Although in general, we only see up quark, down quark and electron, nothing else, when others are unstable. But 
these are also there and these are all fundamental particles so we found most of the subatomic particles but still what was uh, the wonder is how these particles were sticking together what is the force that was keeping this together now we know one big force that is gravity at is a very high level you know planets are uh, uh, sticking together because of uh, to the sun because of the gravity and uh, even on uh, earth we are all existing stable on earth because of gravity so gravity is a good force we all know but in uh, atomic level there are different kinds of forces in the nucleus we found this is strong binding force and uh, that strong binding force is actually keeping both protons and neutrons together uh, uh, neutrons together and this electromagnetic force we all know because this is primarily coming from electricity where electrons are moving freely from one atom to another atom but there is also a weak force in the neutrons which is actually making them radiate uh, and therefore there are at least four kind of fundamental forces we have understood but how these forces are sustaining and here they have looked at some more particle kind of things now we know that electron uh, elect light is one such particle which is electromagnetic particle we call it photon parallelly when this particle physics is studying is being studied optics had been uh, you know going on as a branch of science for long and then we found light has this both uh, wave structure and also as uh, particles in Uh, exhibited in radiations so photon is supposed to be a particle which is a carrier of electromagnetic force and like that they found a particle called gluon which actually binds this uh, strong positive uh, things together in a nucleus and there are weak nuclear forces which are called bosons and w and z bosons so up up to now we found what is matter that it consists of some particles with different types of uh, strange uh, uh, nucleus uh, elements quarks and electrons and also some particles which bind together and some particles which travel like photon so this up this would do uh, you know slowly the standard model of particle physics was coming into picture what you see here you will see many places so this uh, these are all the ones in the uh, violet color is all the quarks and the green color are all leptons and the red color are all called bosons gauss bosons and gluon photon and the z and w bosons are two different types of bosons but still all these particles while they explain beautifully uh all the characteristics of all the matter mass was still missing none of these particles had the kind of mass what gave the whole matter the mass that we are looking at was still missing right so one thing they found is this bosons are not really particles but they are manifestation of a field so this field is an energy field in which these particles are formed and that is the basis of some of the uh, binding uh, thing so they found okay 
particles are something that are formed out of a field, then if we study, there must be a field which should give these particles some mass. So they were looking for one such field, which would then give the mass to this structure of, let's say, a proton with two uh, up quarks and one down quark. Why that is staying together there? and how it has mass. Because the mass of both quarks, uh, up, up, up quark and down quark, if you add them, they're minuscule uh, in, in compared to the real mass of the proton. So also a neutron. So where the mass is coming is what they wanted to understand. And that's when they had to go more in instead of uh, just particle, they also had to go into what's called quantum mechanics and quantum field theory. In the basis of that is, there's nothing like particle and, and wave. Uh, there is, in a wave, particle is just an excitation of energy. And uh, because of this energy, there is a field of mass which is appearing in particles and keeping them together. And so that explained that mass is all that mass that we are thinking about in, in the uh, electron or in the atom was coming not from its constituents called quarks, but it's coming from a field and that field is an energy field. So that way, this mass is nothing but a form of energy. That is the Einstein's equation, right? Mass is energy and by C square, E by C square. C square is the uh, speed of light. This is verified that when a particle is traveling closer to the speed of light, it will have no mass. But when it is at speeds less than light, it will have more and more mass. And there is some residual mass there. Born away, even when it is at rest, there is some mass. So that's called inertia, inertia mass. So one way this inertia of mass is can be reduced in a particle is make the particle uh, travel at speeds closer to light, then they find that this mass then decreases. So this, all this was theoretical up to now. And only very recently, that's on 2012, this few, uh, just around uh, 10 years back, we found and confirmed that there is a, in fact, a field like Higgs, Higgs field that was confirmed because they found a particle which, which they were predicting called Higgs boson. So now we have some understanding what mass is and therefore what matter is. So we began with two things. Matter is something which has space, which occupies space and which has some mass, right? But here in modern physics, what are we saying? We're saying mass is not real. It's just an excitation of energy. So mass is not a property of the matter or whatever we are thinking matter, the quarks, but it is only coming from the energy field, which is everywhere. Somehow some particles gain this mass from the field at a given time. So, as we can say, this is like Prabhuji saying, uh, Purna Yoga is nothing but yoga in action. Mass is just energy in action. Otherwise, there's no mass. So, matter is just one way of uh, precise uh, excitation of energy at a particular point. Then, this is what we were saying in philosophy long time back, right? 
So let's rest this matter in science here. And now let's look at what does, uh, what is the view of matter in spirituality? Of course, here I take uh, only Vedanta because that's familiar to all of us. Right? So before we go to that, I wanted to look at these five questions that we uh, wanted. Is matter only that is perceived? We now know that largely matter at its fundamental states cannot be perceived because quarks cannot be seen. They cannot exist separately, but together they appear to be matter. So is it same substance or different substances? Initially, we thought ultimately the same substance, but what we now find is there are a million types of particles. In fact, uh, the total uh, number of particles uh, in the visible world, uh, some say it's a very huge number. So what is the fundamental nature of matter? We thought matter is something that has space, it occupies space and mass. Now we know that while it may look like appearing space, there is space everywhere, inside also and outside also. And ma matter, uh, the mass is something that is only a imagination. Can we create matter or destroy it? Now, this is another fundamental thing. Yes, you can say matter can be created if you find something is coming out of energy as particle and destroy it when it is going into the state of energy. So matter at a fundamental state can be created and destroyed. So that is again another thing we have found. And what is the relationship with matter, energy, and mind? At least matter and energy, you know, they're related. Right? We have not looked at mind yet. So now let's go to the Vedanta aspect or the spirituality of aspect of what is matter. In Vedas, before Vedas, uh, Vedanta came to picture. Vedas were there, but Vedanta is a later. There is a philosophy called Sankhya, which was saying that everything that is uh, materialistic is called Prakriti. Every matter is made of Prakriti. And there's a conscious entity called Purusha, which is nothing to do with this creation. This creation is full of Prakriti and Purusha is separate from Prakriti. It does not participate in the in the create creation, but it is only a conscious observer. And now this Prakriti, there, there are several quotes in the Vedas which say that uh, Mula Prakriti comes from Avyakta, Brahmano Avyakta, Avyakta Mahado Ahankara, Ahankaro, so there is a sequence given where this prakriti is supposed to be in two forms. Avyakta is a very, very unmanifest. So prakriti can be unmanifest and it can be manifest. But when it manifests, it can have different structures and three gunas typically the ahankar that some something that can say i that per, where purusha can identify with and say this is i that can be three gunas sattva rajas and tamas and here the directly vedanta starts with the fact that the matter in fact has three forms mind energy and matter uh, this is what is prakriti overall. So the gross matter, subtle matter, and causal matter are very basic in Vedan, in uh, spirituality. And what we call matter or the uh, gross matter is all a tamasic aspect of it. And this is typically based on the five elements which uh, occurs many times in Vedas as the Panchabhutas, 
आकाशाद वायु तेज और आपस पृथ्वी विच इज स्पेस एयर फायर वाटर एंड बट इन वेदांत अगेन दे लॉट ऑफ एवोल्यूशन दट दे हाउ दिस पुरुषा डील्स विद प्रकृति हाउ महत कम्स इन टू पिक्चर हाउ अहंकारा कम्स इन टू पिक्चर एंड हाउ द ट्वेंटी फोर तत्वास विच uh is there in many places even uh, in, in vedanta and in shaivism or form and what is the specific way they are formed is there everywhere so as per this if you look at in a more uh, scientific terminology consciousness is everything and in that consciousness there is nothing a latent nothing and that is called prakriti now from the prakriti there is a cause the initial cause uh, some say it's a question called koham who am i that's the initial cause that came out into from the causal intelligence and when it began to evolve it started finding its representation in the in creation the point where it started is called om point and it has three aspects sattva rajas and tamas and from there three types of worlds three types of uh, which is uh, the mind and and the vital energy or prana and the body evolved the body evolved in two first from the subtle which is pancha tatvas and then gross world which is pancha bhutas later um elish shankaracharya was the first one who uh, in our thing talked about how this pancha uh, the subtle elements formed into uh, the grosser elements what are the subtle elements they are also called akasha tatva uh, which is the space tatva and then uh, the tejo tatva apas tatva prithvi tatva but they are also associated in us as sound touch form taste and smell and the, these are subtle elements and in a specific proportion that you can see here each gross element has all the five elements for example if you look at the water the gross water is made up of half of the subtle water element and one fourth each of all other elements so this is an explanation given of how gross elements are made in specific proportions of subtle elements now whether it is only five and uh, whether it's combination of uh, uh, in this matters or not it's a later thing but this is a very important uh, uh, spiritual thing that you can get gross by as a proportion of subtle because earlier we found that every gross Uh, element gross looking element had some subtle elements or subtle aspects combining in a specific way to do the gross element so here also some the subtle elements of uh, are converting uh, or pancha tatvas are converting into pancha bhutas so that's the idea of panchikarana but this is more from uh, vedanta even before vedanta came and there were other darshanikas in india and one of that is not we talked about sankhya which was um, mostly uh, purusha and prakriti but this one acharya kanada he was uh, he was uh, very well known for a uh, school of uh, philosophy called vaisheshika he has written vaisheshika sutras in 
600 BC. And in that, some very fundamental scientific papers were, the scientific things were there in which atom was clearly mentioned with some very specific details that how many, there are four types of atoms, earth atom, water atom, light atom, and space atom. And there are also, the reality also had elements called time, uh, direction, soul, and mind. And the reality is made of these nine elements. If these atoms, two are manifested atoms, two are unmanifested atoms. So you see, atom at that time was not just gross, it was subtle elements and uh, gross elements, both were considered atoms. And then he also said, there every, like in uh, today's uh, mechanics, he also said that every padartha has several qualities of which substance is one, which is something like mass, but the quality, the motion, the time, and some peculiarities and some inherences from different things. Some, so all are needed to specify a padartha, which was, which is a understanding now we have in the modern uh, things, whereas in earlier we thought it's only substance and quality that mattered. But now we know uh, any particle should also be described with respect to time and motion and uh, the peculiarities and inherences. Not only this, in fact, uh, there are in some of the sutras were directly uh, replaced uh, direct sources which look like uh, Newton's laws. Uh, for example, every action has equal and opposite reaction. This is a direct uh, thing from one of the sutras that uh, Newton has taken. So most people consider that uh, Newton's ideas were all traveling from the, this earlier text and later it, they were formulated by Newton. We, we don't know, but it is very clear that gravity and effects of gravity were also taught by uh, uh, Canada's Vaisheshika much, much before it was known in the West. So this, we can go on, but let's look at some conclusion. So we are asked five questions. And you know now that in the, from a question point of view, the reality is always in tune with what uh, was there in philosophy, except that of course, a lot of details are uh, lost in, in the spiritual text that we have. But, we can draw some conclusions that the way these two look at matter is from different point of view. They present different, both scientific, the modern science and spirituality, look at different details, but essentially at the back of it, there's a lot of similarity. The core fundamental ideas, is a lot of similarity. So science is, coming from outside to inside approach. We are looking at matter and going down deep into energy. But spirituality right from beginning came from consciousness, energy to matter. So this is what, now do we say one is right, one is wrong? No, we, no, both are different and both are required for us to understand the reality. So we are not saying one is right, one is wrong. All we are saying is there is some similarity and there's a way of uh, approach in the two things. So finally, uh, this is my uh, last slide, which I say that this is the journey from home to where you see a lot of things very well explained by spirituality and uh, later a lot of uh, grosser things are very well explained by science. And the bottom line, therefore, is what is matter? It's just an excitation uh, of energy. So matter is just a form of energy. 
that's very good so now we know matter to some extent but then do we know energy what is energy so this probably will be the next level of talk we will see in this what is energy in, in the scientific point of view and spiritual point of view thank you thank you Yes, Shravan, wonderful talk. Give a broader perspective of uh, the matter in science and spirituality. So, difference is the primary difference is in the science, we think the matter is an objective reality, the subject is not considered at all. In spirit, mm -hmm. the su spirituality, subject, and object both are given as a seamless whole. Yes. The observer and observed is one is given as a sort of um, spectrum. Okay. So consciousness, energy, matter, and living beings and non-living beings are covered in spirituality, whereas the mat science is approaching thinking that consciousness is just a property of matter. Okay. So in that sense, there is a difference in the approach. So then there is one thing which I heard, I don't know whether it's, uh, I heard it correctly. The energy operates on matter, that's what, what's I, what I heard. Is that correct what you said? In scientific perspective? Yes, see, the, right now, the, what they find out is, the, in fact, there's a, there's a lot of discussion on this. Uh, no one can clearly say, but the fact is, if you look at a proton, the mass of all the particles of quarks which make the photon is only very minuscule. These quarks are really massless, but they get energy. Gluons, which actually put them together, are also massless. But because these gluons are constantly traveling and taking energy with that, what the study says that from the Higgs field, which is the field of uh, mass, there is a uptake of energy which is appearing as mass. So there is still there is a lot of uh, uncertainty in what is mass, but energy is what is appearing as mass. Is uh, there are several uh, proof for that? So that's what it means of a E is equal to mc square, right? Yeah, but uh, when what E equal to mc square is becoming more and more famous, but when it was first told, it was not in that angle, but now it looks like it is, overall it is the uh, real equivalence of energy and mass. Yeah, but the reason I'm asking is, many scientists say energy operates on matter. So energy operates on matter, that means energy is a different entity compared to matter, but E is equal to mc square says matter and energy are interchangeable. Yes. So this is because right now what they find is matter particles still exist. They have mass of their own, but they gain more mass because of the force uh, carrying particles and that's energy matter particles. But slowly, this distinction itself is going. The, the universal field theory is saying everything is just fields of energy and different types of energy. Energy excitations appear as matter, but there is nothing wrong like matter actually. Everything is just energy. Uh, Guruji, can I answer the question? Yes, uh, Pranav. Pranav. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, the present understanding is. Um, mm -hmm. So this, so ma mass and so the way we say like there is so e is equal to mc square m mc square comes from something called as a relativistic expression. So one thing that we understand is uh, the way okay yeah so uh, the way we understand this mass. Is a is is a different. So there's something called as relativistic mass. There's something called as Newtonian mass. There's some. So the so this is why like what 
this is why if you ask a scientist he'll say i don't know mass because we can only categorize things these ways mm-hmm. so now uh, there is e equal to mc square mass which is there for all particles mm-hmm. it's called relativistic mass mm-hmm. so quarks have this mass gluons have this mass and all of these have this mass mm-hmm. now the way things interact with each other so if let's say you take two particles now these two have to talk to each other right that there there's some interaction happening mm-hmm. okay so now these two particles by virtue of themselves being a particle themselves has some mass mm-hmm. now the so that is called as an inherent mass and all these particles have that mass mm-hmm. so uh, electrons have that mass and then if you break up a proton it's made up of this uh, it's made up of these quarks and these uh, it's made up of these quarks essentially so mm-hmm. these are what it's made of so mm-hmm. by virtue of themselves they have some mass mm-hmm. the, it's called the relativistic mass mm-hmm. now when these now these things can talk to each other as well electrons can talk to electrons through something mm-hmm. called as electromagnetic uh, interaction mm-hmm. and quarks can talk between themselves through something called as a strong interaction they can mm-hmm. also talk to themselves through something called as the weak interaction mm-hmm. so the way it's like uh, it's like now the way these two talk is through uh, let's say these two are calling each other mm-hmm. so they need some means of communication so let's say i am talking to you so there is mm-hmm. some means of communication happening so whatever i am saying right now is being carried to you through some a medium and by by some energy correct yes so the medium or the energy is mm-hmm. what is called as these force carriers or these gauge bosons mm-hmm. so we what we have identified is there are four different ways in which these force can be carried in this universe mm-hmm. so one is through this gravity and mm-hmm. the force the fo- uh, so the med- so the carrier the the one that carries uh this force between these two particles between two mm-hmm. masses is called as a graviton mm-hmm. then uh between two electrons when they try to talk to each other the force is carried through these things called as photons mm-hmm. between uh quarks they are carried the strong force is carried by these gluons and uh, these weak forces are carried through these called as uh, these uh, w and z bosons Mm-hmm. so now they now now because they now because they are carrying information there is energy involved in it so when i am speaking there's lots of energy that is being transmitted through this uh, through through this medium right so there is mm-hmm. if 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 i were to simplify this it would be like i'm talking it's going to convert into electromagnetic signals radio waves that's reaching you and you are you are able to catch it Mm-hmm. so similarly when these two electrons talk to each other when the the force that the fo- the the medium itself is carrying this force away mm-hmm. and this is giving to another mass mm-hmm. okay so the thing is so 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 initially what was thought is that uh, these force carriers themselves don't have any mass so if you look at photons they don't have mass they carry only energy so the, mm-hmm. the, this is what is radiation essentially so e is equal so so this ra- so if you look at these carriers all of them initially were thought to be massless they just carry pure energy it's just energy but what was found out later was that these these particles also carry mass these particles also carried the definition of this so called relativistic mass mm mm-hmm. they also had relativistic mass in, uh, in in addition to carrying just the strong uh, the, the field energies mm-hmm. so now people wanted to know how this came mm-hmm. so that is when they brought up this uh, higgs boson theory so higgs boson gives mass only to these force carriers and they give mass only to these w and z bosons and the gluons mm-hmm. yeah so this is so this is the definition of this relativistic so these masses so we have these different kind of masses so mm-hmm. one is they have mass because it's because that thing is there like mm-hmm. it's an inherent quality inner quality yes in, it's an inherent quality and then there is mass coming because of the because of two things talking to each other because mm-hmm. of these interactions so relativity mass 
Yes. So 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 the reason why a proton's mass is higher than its constituents, which is a quark and a gluon, is because there is this extremely strong interaction which is mm -hmm. binding all of them together. Mm -hmm. And this is what give and this is what gives this uh, additional mass. Okay. And that's why the proton's mass seems to be higher than uh, if and you add up all the moment you say energy and mass. Yes. I I mean instantly associate energy with this some sort of wave function and mass I associate with the particle function. So energy is not a wave function. Uh, a wave function is used to describe. Uh, it's a wave function is nothing but it's described. It's used to describe a state. Okay. So now, what is energy? So it's it's just a state. So what is a wave function is a state. So mm -hmm. now, you can operate on this wave function. So uh, so wave function by itself has no physical significance. Mm -hmm. Wave function. The wave function squared has a physical significance, which mm -hmm. is given, which is given as the probability distribution. So, if mm -hmm. I were to find out where an electron is, this mm -hmm. one gives me the probability of where to find an electron. Mm -hmm. So, I can find out the energies. So, it's it's used to describe a state. So, I can operate on it and then find out the energies related to that state. So, when you say that. Yes. Uh, going back to our uh, wave particle duality. Yes. So, are we not speaking of energy and mass related to the wave particle duality? No, Guruji. So, no. Uh, they are different. Uh, no. So, uh, these two topics are different. Okay. The thing is, yeah. So, the thing is, uh, wave particle duality is there. Energy mass is there. So, the thing is. Uh, yeah, they're these two related. topics are they're no, not they're not related. One is no, at quantum level, related. and another is at a more uh, 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 the wave particle duality. We are speaking of quantum phenomena, and yes. uh, mass and energy are it's applicable everywhere, applicable everywhere, including quantum. Yeah. Yes, okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. By the way, this uh, mass, all comments are from, uh, if you look at a philosopher or scientist kind of, Jim Baggett, I think his name, Jim Baggett, he talks about mass, he's got a book called Mass, in which he talks about what uh, uh, what we were uh, saying. But of course, he also explained that this is uh, his predictions and it's not, uh, there's a lot of confusion as uh, there are different sects of scientists and they don't agree because uh, we are talking of multidisciplinary things here. And therefore, this is what it is right now. So, any more questions uh, from anybody? If uh, no questions, we can close because it's almost one hour from, this, from the time we started. Okay, okay Sean. Uh, thank you. It's wonderful. We were waiting for your next session on energy. Let us see how okay. much energy you'll bring in. I don't know. <laughs> yes, it is there. <laughs> Whether it comes out or not, it's all probabilistic. <laughs> so, I hope. Hari Om. Thanks, Pranam. Thanks, Pranam.